Online crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter and Indiegogo have allowed for a number of years for people to invest in creative projects, technology projects, essentially by pre-buying a ticket or the first version of a specific gadget. On the other side, accredited investors always had the opportunity to invest uh, on equity in the last years through platforms like AngelList or Funders Club. What's new with the rules that were passed in May of 2016 is that every citizen can essentially invest in a startup or in a project in exchange for equity. It's important to remember that these are very risky assets, mostly because most startup projects uh, tend to fail. Uh, they're very risky relative to you know, established ventures. What's interesting is that although it's too early to assess the impact of equity crowdfunding under Title III, so the new rules, uh, something that the rules already tell us is that these rules are unlikely to generate the next Uber or the next kind of unicorn. Although part of the press has described them as a game changer, key features of these rules really limit their potential for the best entrepreneurs. The best entrepreneurs may still be attracted to platforms that offer syndication, private deals, or maybe even just fall back to offline channels like angels or venture capital. At the same time, these new platforms like WeFunder, Republic, and others would be great as a marketing and a user-based building exercise. We already know from cases like the Pebble Watch that you can really build a strong following online through these crowdfunding platforms. The potential here is also to extend capital to segments either of the population or of industries and verticals that haven't been touched yet by regular forms of capital. We could think about more funding for women entrepreneurs, but also funding towards minorities or projects that have a strong social impact. The hope is that these new business models will be supported by this uh, further uh, evolution uh, on these platforms.